If mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Ever heard that phrase? Well, you may be laughing about it, but what does it really mean and what kind of impact does that have on a marriage? We're pleased to have David and Tracy Sellers from Bows to Keep Marriage Ministries joining us again this week. And we are uh, talking about some common phrases that we hear in marriage, but let's dig a little deeper and really see what, that, what we're really saying. Definitely, this is a phrase I've heard over and over in my life. I've heard people use it. I've used it, I've <laughs> thought it, but I never really looked at it from a biblical perspective. So that's what we wanna do today. Just find right. out, is this something that we can back up scripturally or is this something that we've kind of come up with on our own? Because I really do hear this phrase inside the church and I hear outside the church. So we wanna examine it and see, are we using it to our own benefit at home? Mm. Cause I think that I do that sometimes. As a woman, I hear the advice all the time, you know, ladies take care of yourselves first because when you do that, then you're gonna be happy and then you can make everyone else happy. So we're gonna examine that as we talk today. And I think one of the really important points we wanna make um, as we're starting to unpack this, um, this phrase is that nothing we're saying is negating the fact that men need to be engaged. Mm -hmm. They need to be anticipating and looking for ways they can be involved in their family. They need to take seriously um, the role they have to, to really support their family and to you know, take charge within their family. So no, nothing we're gonna say today would, would negate that. But. but I think where it goes awry is when we start demanding that we be put number one, that mm -hmm. our needs be put number one, because can't you see that I'm working so hard and you've got to do this, you've got to hop to it because this is what I want. I'm going to be happy when I get that, so let's get going on it. And we start demanding and we let our unhappiness be shown and that demand sets in and it sets up a cycle that's hard to break. I think um, uh, unlike any other kind of premarital advice um, that, that's given out there, this is one of those phrases that's given very commonly and is generally accepted. And it's risky because um, that phrase, when mom ain't happy, ain't nobody happy, mm -hmm. um, it, it actually doesn't have very good biblical support for it as we're gonna dig into. But a lot of times, you know, we've heard of couples that have gone to psychologists that say, hey, man, help me with my marriage. And, and they would say to them this phrase and say, you need to take this very seriously. Again, I, I think it's important that we take, as husbands, take the role of supporting our wives very seriously but we shouldn't do that out of threat or out of um, fear, but rather out of a deep love. And that's really something that no matter whether we're a man or a woman, whether we've had a, a Christian upbringing or not, whether uh, we've been married before or not, accepting some of these truths, some of these things as truth when they're really not, has some interesting implications for us. So I think when we think about where did this come from, why is it something we're so prevalently um, receiving and, and oftentimes applying, we, we, when, we still, when we really look at that, we really try to understand why, it's something we learn from experience. We can see in our marriages that when we have a wife who's demanding, um, a lot of times it's easier just to give in than it is to do anything else than to deal with the repercussions of it. We can make our spouse pay when they don't give us our way. And I didn't mean to rhyme on that, but it really is true. We let them know, hey, next time you better do what I want, otherwise you're gonna receive from me maybe the cold shoulder, or I'm gonna get angry at you, or I'm gonna withdraw affection from you. And I think we can do the same thing with our kids. Like they know as well, because we've been in a car together, we've been driving down the road, dad says, hey, where do you guys wanna go for dinner? And the mom says, pizza sounds good, and all the kids say, let's go get hamburgers. So the majority wins out, you go get hamburgers, and then you end up complaining the whole time about how bad the hamburgers are and how the place smells or whatever your complaint is, and you make the meal pretty miserable for everybody else. I've done that. I've made the situation, whatever it is, miserable because I didn't get my preference. And, uh, you, uh, <coughs> excuse me, here's another example. You've got a messy house. I get very stressed out when my house is messy. I don't appreciate that. And sometimes I can kind of go on the rampage, like everybody's got to get going on my agenda this afternoon. We're gonna stop everything else. All we're gonna do is clean. And I'm pretty miserable to everyone else in that time. And I'm very stressed out, I'm making them stressed out. No one else is happy because I'm not happy. You mean I can't, I, I can't do that? <laughs> <laughs> but then at the end of the afternoon, I have a clean house and I magically turn into this really nice person yeah. who says, 
you know, to the child, let's play together. That's the child I just got done reaming out because the room was messy. The thing, those two things aren't matching up. If mom ain't happy, ain't nobody happy, I'm letting them know by experience that that is a true statement. It's something that both men and women truly buy into. I think it's something that just stems from the fact that we we all have this selfish ability within us. And when we don't get what we want, we, of course, are not happy as a result of that. But thankfully, God's word mm -hmm. compels us to really do the opposite of those things. When we love God, and that is what's motivating us, we see a completely different behavior out of us. It, it becomes a heart to serve. And that is something that is very, very addictive within a marriage. When you have a desire to serve, it becomes something mm -hmm. that your kids see. And, and that's critical, that's critical. You have this natural progression that happens and all of a sudden you begin to get your joy out of serving others. And it's not a temporal joy that you get when someone's serving you. It's a totally different mindset. Uh, I'm preaching to myself as we, as we talk about this because as I said, I, I mean, for me, I'm as selfish as, as anyone, but Jesus is asking us to model our attitudes after him. And I think if we look at Philippians 2, we see Jesus, he's laying down his preferences so much so that he gives his whole life. And that is, a, as a husband, what I'm called to do. We have to consider other, purpose, other people's needs more important than our own. And the end result of that is a true happiness. It's such a shift. It's a shift in our mindsets that we shouldn't be pursuing our own agendas. I think it's important to look at our family's happiness and ask ourselves the hard question, do we want our family's happiness to be based on our happiness. That's a tough one because I set that up as an agenda for myself, but is that really what I want for my family? Do I want them to finally be happy when I am? No, I want them to be happy because they can have a relationship with Jesus Christ and that brings ultimate fulfillment and it's not based on the life of pride that I've built mm -hmm. for myself. It's not based mm -hmm. on the tool of manipulation in this phrase. It's not based on that anymore. It's based on showing them that they can have true happiness outside of me and even outside of them. Yeah, I think if, if you see and you recognize that this kind of pride has been something that's driven your actions, and again, it's, it's not just mamas that have this yes. yeah. happen. Husbands are in the same place. I think it's so important that you let your family realize that um, you want to free them of that burden, that you want to help them to see that their happiness shouldn't actually be based on yours. And when you do that, the cool thing about it is that they actually learn that other people's happiness shouldn't be based on theirs, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So uh, it's, a, it's a cycle that repeats itself. They're watching, they're learning, and, and they're watching the example that we have. And when we set the example to, to, to be that we're the most important person in the room and everyone needs to know that, um, they quickly assume that themselves. So we lay down those rights, and I think it's an important thing to do. It can be, I think we can be selfish without realizing it. You know, happiness in the end is a, is a gift. You know, joy is something we should strive for. I always feel like happiness is, happiness is fleeting. Um, but the Bible is oftentimes, the, not oftentimes, it's always the key source to show us where we find that true happiness that we find. So as families are going through this and saying, I don't want to be in this cycle anymore, what are some scriptures that they can go to to help guide them through it? I think First Samuel um, chapter 8 has a great story in it that helps people to, to be able to see what the Bible would say on this subject. Israel has basically said to God, that we, we want to have a king to lead us, just like all the other nations around us have a king. That's what we want. And in this statement, they're basically saying to God, we don't want you as king. They're rejecting him. And they think that a king's going to make them happy. So God tells them, you know what? I could give you this king, but he's going to take the best of everything from you. Um, ultimately, you're going to come crying back to me and, and wish that you hadn't asked for this, but I'll give them to you if you want. And ultimately, they say, yes, we do want this king. And God gives them to them. And out of that, um, we see in verse 19, you know, what they're really looking for is they want someone to lead them. They want someone to fight their battles. When God gives it to them, they're unhappy. And the end result is, is unhappiness. And that is the same for us. We demand our way. We expect to have our preferences. And there's consequences to it. And those consequences don't result in us being ultimately happy. And in the end, no one's happy. That's why I think it's important at the end of the day, if we find ourselves unfulfilled, it's probably because we've been pursuing our own happiness. We haven't been 
having that shift into the Philippians 2 mindset of serving others like Christ served. We need to go back to Jesus and get our cue from him truly and say, God, how would you like me to serve tomorrow? Let's start over again tomorrow. It doesn't have to be like today. I don't have to put my family in that box. I don't have to bind them with this manipulation tool. I can free them by doing things your way instead. And like you said earlier, happiness is fleeting, but that true lasting joy, I believe, comes when we serve. It can be tough. It can be tough as a wife and as a mom to be in those situations. Mm -hmm. I wear a bracelet that says, be still as a reminder to yes. try to stop myself from those right. crazy clean up the mm -hmm. house moments because yeah. it can be difficult. But And I think if we find ourselves in that position, because it's going to come and it's going to sneak up on us pretty yeah. quick because that's our sinful, selfish nature. So if you're in the middle of that and you recognize that, that's number one, the Holy Spirit working in you show you he's tapping you on the shoulder saying stop and do that be still you know that's great to have reminders like that maybe put something on your kitchen sink or your bathroom mirror a verse that says remember when you're in the middle of that you can stop right then and there you don't have to finish it out and then you can go to your family and say i'm sorry for putting my preferences before yours let's do this together and let's do it to glorify god all right, well, the key is mama can be happy and everyone can be happy, but we need to have God and the Bible as the key source. VowsToKeep.com is the website where you can go to find out more about the marriage ministry of Vows to Keep. Dave and Tracy Sellers, we're so thankful for this component of information and be watching in weeks to come because we have a lot more nuggets of marriage information coming as well. You can also hear more from Dave and Tracy by listening to WTTP here in Lima or Shine FM in the Bell Fountain and Kenton area and also on the outskirts of Lima. If mama ain't happy, nobody's happy. Well, let's put God in the middle and that's where we true fun, truly find the happiness.